In Sri Lanka, chemicals are contaminating groundwater and threatening people's health. One researcher is using nature to clean up a man-made problem. Sri Lanka, an ancient land whose inhabitants have long lived in close harmony with nature. For centuries, people have understood that as long as they safeguard the forest, the rivers would flow, the water would be clean. But in Kalpitya Peninsula, on the west coast of Sri Lanka, the balance of this delicate ecosystem has been broken. By clearing forests and using too much pesticide and chemical fertilizer, farmers have destroyed their ancient source of water. Their water has become unsafe to drink, and people began paying the price with their health. There was sediment in the well, and the water tasted funny and was red in color. Nandavati is one of the many people in her village suffering from respiratory and skin problems, cancer and birth defects. She has asthma. I feel tightness in the chest and numbness in my two hands. What happened here is a cautionary tale of what can go wrong when people fail to sustainably manage their resources and of how an ancient technology can help solve problems man creates. A sandy peninsula between the Indian Ocean and the Putlam Lagoon, Kalpitya is home to the country's largest shallow aquifer. Lying just a couple of feet below the white sand, the underground water feeds into thousands of wells, the only source of fresh drinking water for the nearly 65,000 people on the peninsula. Once pristine, its water is now heavily polluted. The problem started in the 1980s with the proliferation of agricultural chemicals. While fertilizers and pesticides can make crops grow faster and bigger, their excessive use, along with the large volume of water used for cultivation, has created an environmental disaster. Because the sand is porous, water washes down easily, carrying chemicals to the water table below, spreading contaminants across the land. Repeated studies found that many wells contain pollutants six times over the safety level set by the World Health Organization. Dr. Chandrani Lianage of the University of Rahuna. The, the nitrite gets accumulated in the body. So the effect will be shown over a long, long period of time. In 2000, the Sri Lankan government hired Kamal Melvani, a scientist, to find a low-cost solution to clean up the water. Kamal proposed an experiment to use biomediation, an age-old method of using trees to filter pollutants. When I came here, there was just absolutely nothing here except this well. We began planting this area and we used essentially native species of trees. The idea is to create mini forests around wells using a variety of species of both fast and slow growing plants. What you're getting is this dense mat of roots around the well. So when the water in this shallow aquifer moves into the well area, it actually passes through the root, dense root mat and gets filtered and comes into the well. Today, nine years of continuous testing has shown that Kamal's method is working. The water in this well that initially tested five times over the safety limit is now safe to drink. Supported by the Global Environment Facility's Small Grants Program, Kamal planted more than 6,000 plants belonging to 54 species around wells across the peninsula, in schools, public areas and at homes, including Nandavati and her husband's well. Now we can drink the water. Before it was not possible. More than just filtering pollutants, these mini forests have many other benefits. Everything has a use in this landscape design. 
Everything has either a use for medicine, for timber, for fuel wood, for food. Now this plant particularly, Piper longum, is traditionally called tipili. The fruit of the plant is used as a um, cough, um, a remedy for coughs and for bad throats. While trees can help slow the contamination, the long-term solution would be for farmers to stop using excessive chemicals and start growing their crops organically. So if these poor farmers can do, can practice organic agriculture well, be certified and get a premium price for their produce, then yes, the best is yet to come. But like growing a forest, it'll probably take a little time. That's all for this edition of 21st Century. I'm Daljit Daliwal. We'll see you next time. Until then, goodbye.